Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Enlighten Up podcast. We have officially entered eclipse season and who better than to give us all of the grand details, all the mystical essence of our full moon lunar eclipse in Libra, but Mary Ducina, our favorite astrologer, seer, Scorpio queen, the one who loves to get to the truth and deliver the truth right to you. (laughs) Mary, how are you doing? (laughs) Blessings to you, beloved Nicole, our Taurus queen, and to the audience, beloved spring in the Northern Hemisphere has happened, and Nicole and I are excited to talk to you about the seeds of change. Yes, yes, and so we have officially entered into spring here in the Northern Hemisphere, and uh, you know, eclipse season, oh, it always packs a punch, you know, eclipses bring in very faded energy, they always bring in change. Uh, Because this is an opportunity for you to course correct, oftentimes when eclipses are happening. But before we get into this actual Libra lunar eclipse, I would like you guys to go back in time. Let's travel back in time about six months to the middle of October, October 13th, October 14th. And think about what was going on for you during the new moon solar eclipse in Libra, because that was our first Libra eclipse of this particular uh, run that we're having on this axis. And so think back to then, because that was when you were planting new seeds. That is when you were making new choices. Now, solar eclipses usually uh, will show you the fruits of your labor over the course of the next six months. It's really important to remember that when we have eclipses, not everything is apparent in that moment. You have to wait for some of the information to be revealed to you over time. And lunar eclipses will tend to reveal it over the next few months. Uh, And so think back, now that we know we are talking about the Libra moon, Libra rules, our relationships, our important one-to-one connections, whether it's romantic, whether it's uh, people you deeply care about, like your friendships, it could be a business partnership, it rules contracts, negotiations, and harmony and balance. And so think back to that first solar eclipse and what were you making choices on what were you what seeds were you planting because I remember Mary my that solar eclipse is very powerful for me because I remember it deeply it's as if I it's as if it was just yesterday because there something came to the surface for me that I vowed to myself that I was never going to be in these um patterns of Uh, let's just call it lack or feeling like uh, I am without or whatever it was. I said, this is all changing now. I don't know what I need to do, but I am never going to be in this position again. And I don't just mean like it's I'm not even really talking so much about money. I'm talking about just in general. And of course, Libra rules our relationships, although Libra is ruled by Venus and Venus does rule money when she's we're talking about Taurus. But I have had a significant shift of like who, what came up over that time. So when we think back to that full, that sorry, that new moon solar eclipse in Libra, that was happening in the later degrees of Libra. The south, um, the south node uh, was 
in the last deacon of Libra. So in the, in the 20 to 29 degrees and Venus still had to make her passage through there. Now remember Venus is the ruler. So Venus didn't make her passage through that period uh, where the moon was. Uh, and that happened at the end of November. Well, at the end of November, I had a very significant event where someone who I had cared about deeply, we it was it was someone I had dated in the past, but we were now just more focused on a friendship. But again, like the door was still kind of like, I don't know, is this gonna open? Or is it not? Should we just keep it closed? And when the when Venus passed the south node and mm -hmm. then activated where that moon had the eclipse. This person was completely removed out of my life for good, like completely mm -hmm. cleared. And and I don't mean just actual physically, although, although it is physical, um, but I mean, like emotionally, I've never, never been able to be, there was only one other time that I was so certain I never wanted anything to do with another guy again that I had dated in the past. Mm -hmm. And that was in mm -hmm. my 20s. And so this was a very deeply emotionally triggering response for me. Like it was so guttural. It was so vivid. Mm -hmm. And now as we're getting close to the, the you know, the, the Libra full moon lunar eclipse, now we're, we're coming up to illumination. Something's being revealed. Something's culminating. And I am now experiencing uh, someone coming into my life. And again, it's still very new um, and I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but it's shown the most promise I've seen in a very, very long time. And I'm talking years, years and years. And I, I believe that it's because there was such a like vehemently like visceral response to that solar eclipse in October with Libra. I was like, this is where it ends. Like I am so done. Like I, I stamp it. I con whatever contract I need to tear up, like it is done. And it showed itself through the Venus South node passage. Um, and of course, Venus is going to be passing the North node in the next uh, few weeks, you know, in the next month or so, but it's, it's interesting. What, what's your take on that? That's really a, a, a very nice explanation as it's so funny. There's a military helicopter flying over right as you were talking about the sure vehement and the visceral and the vivid. And, and I, my hand to God, there is a, a red tailed hawk flying parallel to it. Like I'm thinking, dang, it just flew right under it. So I love the way mother nature gives us these live visual Oracle cards. So maybe, in, in listening to you and tuning in intuitive, what I felt was that, boy, the Venus, the V, the letter V, you know, the visceral, the vivid, the visionary, the the vivacious, the, you know, even even the vehement, the, you know, it's like it was really guttural type of thing. So maybe that's our V for victory for this eclipse cleansing. My, let's, let's make it, I, even though I've done astrology for over 35 years, this lifetime, I like to start out with the foundational basis of it. So first off, there's a couple of, of key points that I know that Nicole and I and, and any other astrologer make it easier for you, the listening, learning audience, to be able to dive into your your own star map a little easier. So number one, we look at the signs. So we're looking at Aries, which is I am, and the Aries Libra eclipses. Aries has to do with how am I centering myself do I need to do a reset? Do I, will I, will I be bold enough? Because Aries is very bold. It's the ignition on the engine or the boat or the airplane. It's a boom, 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 boom when you start it up. So the Aries part of you is if you'll just gently ask yourself in prayer when you're swimming in the pool, when you're hiking in the woods, if you'll just say to, my, yourself, your, to you, to yourself and your higher guides, and what is it in 2024 that seems to be vivid? Uh, with and what has vitality for my desires, and if I were able to be waving the magic wand, because you are, and you can, and you are the magic wand, if I were to reset myself, Aries is all about self-initiations, the promise of the new dawn. As I'm, as I'm allowing a dawn, because we have to allow it, like Nicole was saying about patterns, we've got to move past our programming. We don't need to judge it 
we don't need to get caught up in the judgment of my, my childhood was horrible. I had these abuses. I was, we need to, I'm not taken away when we've had tough things in our childhood. We all have to a greater or lesser degree, but our spiritual progress and our ability to be the magicians and the alchemist to bring in, okay, that's toxic. I don't need to get hung up on it. I'm going to let that go. And I learned from that. I see that now as a potential repetitive dynamic pattern of teaching from my programming and I'm going to move past my programming. So that's what I mean on the different times with Nicole that I've said, sometimes we have to literally go through it in order to grow from it. But then we detach from it. We let it die. We divorce it. We divorce it and realize there's a light switch that goes on with Aries to where, okay, I have choices. That's my automatic pilot reaction action buttons. I can now choose other methodology to be able to cope, build hope, and allow the new dynamic, the new paradigm. So the Aries is smashing all of the paradigm attachments that we've held on to because it was just our go-to. You know, we were little kids and babies and teenagers, and it was just our go-to based on what we saw grandparents and aunts and uncles and siblings and mom and dad put down as how it was done in our household. So now you're stepping outside of the programming medicine wheel, yeah, uh, that which was handed down to, well, I believe this, and we do that that way, and don't do that that way. And if you're a girl, act like this, and if you're a boy, don't cry, all that stuff. And now we're being able to say, where am I in that? So Aries is all about where am I and how mom said to do it? Where am I in the way that dad or my brother or my mean uncle or my or my bougie extra aunt, you know, that shamed or judged me, you know, the relatives in your life is, you're too thin. You're too fat. You're fat enough. Or don't eat that. Or that's too much sugar. Here, take a pill and calm calm yourself down because you're hyperactive. Those people that administered judgments or scenarios onto that hidden message of like, you're really annoying. You need to act like this in order to what? Please me or let my day be easier. So again, without getting caught up in judging these teachers, these professors, these family members, Aries is about, it's 2024. And these eclipses, when Nicole and I talk about looking back at a full moon lunar eclipse, these eclipses have not occurred since 19 and a half, 20 years ago. So let's fly back as time travelers to who or what was a priority dynamic in 2003 into 2004. And like to Nicole's being transparent, in my life, my beloved younger sibling died from from brain and liver cancer the the absolute most compatible family old soul dynamic that i had you know i we were running buddies and we knew we knew that we had many other compatible lifetimes together because we just got each other you know and his taurus planets bounced off my scorpio and we both have cancerian moon ruled stuff in our charts so we we always glided together we just we, we were just like two peas in a pod as they say So his transition was in that 2003 year. So I really had to rise back up again with all of that. And interestingly enough, those of you that are intermediate to advanced astrologers, those eclipses in the 12th house, the embryonic, the bigger than this life sign, Taurus has the 12th house of Aries. The sign before Taurus, he was a Taurus, is Aries. And so he went out in his in that time period that those eclipses that are the month before we move in each year to the sign of Taurus. So a lot of times, like right now, for Taurus people, the Taurus and Scorpio people, these Aries Libra by sign eclipses are assisting Taurus people, Taurus moons, Taurus sun signs, Taurus ascending rising signs, Scorpio moons, Scorpio sun signs and Scorpio ascendant rising signs, those two signs, in a sense, are under a more intense spotlight of what these eclipses that have not happened with this type of of, uh, uh, intensity, because they're they're happening, going back to last year, like Nicole said, the spring, you know, of, of 2023, the one she talked about in October of 2023, that was the start point, and these eclipses are going to bloom out over 18 to 19 months from that point of spring of 2023. Astrology is about how the constellations keep spinning around in the great turning of the wheel. So right now, for all of you, suggestion number one, locate what are the houses 
the zones, the sections, uh, which, which uh, 12 slices of the, of the star wheel pizza pie do you have the axis or the signs of Aries and Libra? This is where the action started in April of last year, October of last year. And we're running, like Nicole said, these six-month uh, graduations. We get soul lessons. We got soul lessons in October of 2023 to do with how we're relating in our most significant other partnerships. So family, work, uh, friends, our running buddies, you know, our ride to die, our BFFs, and also intimate cleansing started very strongly with October of 2023. And then we're going forward. And as we're letting the, the bloom in March of 23rd, 24th, 25th, full moon eclipses, you know, there, I was telling Nicole, I, I, the image I got was a dandelion. And in spring in the Northern Hemisphere, the, the yellow flowers of the dandelions come up first. The whole entire plant is edible, not if you use Roundup or chemicals, but the dandelion greens, you know, and then we get the stem, you get the yellow flower, and then you get the puff. You get that pretty little puff that children just delight in blowing the little dandelion blossoms off into the unknown, but you actually can see it when you blow it. They just take off like the, like the world tree and the first Avatar movie, the ancestors, the energies, the energy seeds. So this full moon eclipse in Libra, as Nicole was saying, is, is Libra is governed by the energies of Venus. And we've got Jupiter and Uranus and Venus's other power sign, her first power sign of Taurus. So there's a lot of Venusian, there's a lot of resets that are going to take place as we blow these dandelion seeds with our intentions. And rather than lighting a sage wand or cleansing your house or yourself with the frankincense, well, there's several methods you can do mystically to clear and cleanse uh, embedded energies, you know, uh, programming and, and, and cellular toxicity. You can do the frankincense oil on your forehead and walk your property starting with the east. You can light copal or sweetgrass or a sage wand, white sage wand, start in the east and clear the last 19 years, clear the last. You don't have to always pay for past life regression readings. You can actually become a disciple that participates and clear it. And as you're blowing those psychic dandelion seeds off into the unknown, you're leaning in to the magic of the archetype of Aphrodite and Venus and, and Libra, the scales of justice, the balance. Libra corrects. It does, a, as Nicole said earlier, a course correction on justice versus what is unjust and law and order. So it's going to organize and it's going to show us the laws of our heart, the eyes of our heart, where we have wanted to, in a sense, um, lean in too much to wanting to keep the peace. You know, like people will say, um, I, I, I don't want to deal with that. I want to keep the peace at all costs where Libra is peace, the double peace. And, and, and alternately, we this eclipse helps us not be afraid of being liked. Sometimes we want to keep the peace in the family because we just don't want the rejection or we don't want to upset the dinner party or somebody invites us out to a happy hour and then they're busy giving us these, these little sarcastic verbal arrows or poison darts or slurs. So the Aries in us, and we all have Aries somewhere, regardless of your moon rising sign or sun sign, that this starts the order. We have Aries. And Isabel Hickey, one of my favorite astrological teachers, um, who is since now in spirit, wrote a book. And I've always said to my clients, if you buy one book that will help you clear the path and understand esoteric or soul-based astrology. It's Isabel Hickey's book, Astrology, the Cosmic Science. I just gave you a treasure gem right there. Trust me. And what she says about that is that the, the Libra energy is balancing out where we have enabled other people to kind of dominate us or push their energy patterns or their energy sheets or, or auric shields around us and not, you know, when you don't really feel listened to or you feel like that you weren't heard and yet you were at that cocktail hour, you were at that dinner party, you love the people that are around you and it kind of surprised you that they wanted to try to just blow out those little verbal darts and Aries can do that. So Libra is helping us understand the most optimal way to detox, to reset, and to not allow another person to trigger us to where we overly react to the energy dart that they threw out. If we're going to react, 
let's take responsibility for taking that pregnant pause and reacting with where we feel it's a win-win optimal scenario for that family member, that, that significant other, that work uh, situation that's going on. But I agree with Nicole. Full moons shed light onto where there is too much of a shadow or too much stuff going on behind the scenes. And sometimes it can hurt our feelings to be find out that someone's jealous of us or envious of us or vying for our, our, our own uh, spotlight at work or at home or in the relationship dynamic. So Libra is like telling us, instead of trying to keep the peace at all costs, maybe we find the center of what brings us peace. And if that means walking away from that predictable family dynamic, you know, if you're the hero of the family or you're the one that always fixes it or you're the black sheep of the family, we're now going to make a choice. Aries gives us the courage to make the choice to say, you know what, I'm not just that and I'm not just limited by that. So the signs right now, are number one most important to locate those, um, and especially if you have any planets between three to six degrees of a cardinal sign, which very quickly are Aries and its opposite polarity sign Libra. And if you have any natal birth chart planets located at the three to six degrees of Cancer Capricorn, you know, like if your moon is is six to seven degrees of Capricorn, the nodes. North Node in Aries right now, South Node in Libra, and these eclipses are going to be kind of swirling specifically for you by that planet that might be that if it's Mercury, there's going to be some communication dynamics that come up. You have to clear the air. Mercury is clearing the air and, and working on belief patterns. If it's your moon, then it might have to do with what your mother, grandmother, key females handed down in your life, your running buddies, and maybe you're not just in some kind of category of, well, they did it that way. So that means I'm only going to get approval if I do it that way. So this is a real, I mean, you look on the, on the Western Zodiac medicine wheel. Aries is the sunrise, the dawning. Libra is the sunset. And as we're going into twilight. So Libra is more, we can, we have, we are. You know, it's that alignment of you and another person, be it compatible or incompatible. Aries is about the dawning. So I feel this eclipse in Libra is opening up the path. It opens up an energetic portal all the way into the full moon in mid-September. It's going to open up to that point to where we just had the supermoon in Pisces, the full moon that occurs in mid-September of this year that's going to be eclipsed. It's going to be eclipsed, and it's going to dip its star rays back into that point of the Pisces. So what is being dreamed into reality right now what we're actually learning and stepping into and stepping away from and divorcing and breaking up with right now is going to come back for a major major this lifetime soul reset graduation you know we go to high school we go to elementary school we go to college or a tech college we do the lessons we do the test and then we finally graduate so this is some soul lessons on the specifics of what I've talked about justice is it fair is it a win-win or is it too one-sided is, is the you know aberrant ego getting out of place and everybody's wanting to like you only if you keep doing it their way on that day and we're going to reach a graduation in september with the beauty of the 12th sign of the zodiac pisces is going to literally shower us with blessings so if i had to say it in a tarot card nicole we had the ace of cups bloom with this supermoon in Pisces and all this Piscean energy, this planetary parade stellium of all the Pisces energies that started popping, you know, in the beginning of March. Then we had the new moon over March 11th. That was a supermoon, the second of five in a row of our new moons blooming out in that 19th, 20th degree. And now the graduation of the majesty of our soul and the alchemy of shedding that which is toxic both around us and has been embedded in living within us. Like we've kind of been manifesting this in an unconscious way. The dream world and our guides and our angels and our ability to transform in, in gentle Venusian loving ways is what's coming up now between um, this, this mid-March. I mean, even on St. Patrick's Day, we had a beautiful bloom of the Pisces energy. So these little seeds 
these dandelion seeds that are coming from an earth plant, the dandelion, were picking it up and blowing the seeds into the ethers, into the majesty of our breath joined with divine breath is going to come through. We don't ever see where the little seeds land all the time. So we're going to have landing of seeds as we come in to mid-September of 2024. I think, you know, with this particular uh, full moon in Libra, that because when I, it's important, I want people to understand that, you know, oftentimes when we hear about a full moon, we think, oh, endings, because something's coming to a culmination, um, you know, but with endings also come beginnings, right? Don't forget. And so this particular full moon is in a beautiful trine to Pluto. And Pluto is yeah. all about the death and the rebirth. And so with Pluto being in Aquarius, there's something beautifully flowing in towards where the moon is in whatever house that is for you, wherever Libra five degrees is in your chart. Okay, the moon there is getting some assistance. It's getting this divine flow of energy of Pluto of this death and rebirth. Something has either transformed or is about to transform. And you're going to either be reaping the benefits of perhaps some work that started back in October, or you're going to finally see what that means for you now in a sense of perhaps there needed to be a letting go. Maybe because of the work you started back in October, now you're going to see, okay, I'm at this heightened point. And as Mary said, when we had that, that helicopter, the military helicopter, that's saying you've got a bird's eye view, right? You have yep. 40,000 foot view looking over your everything that you've done. And now you can see the fruits of your labor and you can get a better understanding of where you're at and what needs to happen. It wouldn't have been so clear to you back in October when this new moon um, for Libra solar eclipse occurred. And so something is definitely going through a death and rebirth cycle for you in this area of that really also remember that Pluto, especially because we talk about the moon, the moon rules our subconscious mind. Uh, it, it rules the hidden parts of us, our shadows. Uh, it rules the feminine energy. But Pluto also loves to rule the underground, the underworld. It rules also going into the subconscious. And so I would say if you're not already, I would think bef about a week or two before even this full moon Libra lunar eclipse is occurring, because I know I'm experiencing it, is that you might be noticing certain beliefs that have to be let go in when it comes to you and your relationships in whatever way it works for you. So maybe it's about how you show up in relationships. Maybe you're realizing there are beliefs that hold you back. Maybe you you realize that there are beliefs that are um, not helpful to your current relationships. Or maybe you're realizing that your beliefs have completely transformed and the relationships, maybe you have one or two relationships that just don't fit your new belief system and your values. Because again, Venus rules values. And this is all really coming up for review as well, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when you talk about Libra, Libra is the sign of relating, you know, so we talked about, Nicole mentioned the word beginning, start putting dawning, begin, a new dawn, new beginnings, new initiations. And, and with Aries, we first have to allow a personal initiation. We first have to take it back to us, the you that looks at you in the mirror and says, what am I ready to let go of instead of just continually complaining about the same old scenario again and again and again ad nauseum to the people that care about me. You know, why do I keep complaining or whining and allowing the theater of drama to come up? And yet I complain about it. But what steps do I take? What steps are the responsibility of me to shift the change? And that's why I mentioned that people trying to keep the peace at all costs. Libra, even the symbol is the scales of justice, the legal scales, and it's the sign of our relating and one-on-one -on -one connection. So at a full moon, and add times 10, when it's a lunar eclipse, at, at each year we have a full moon in Libra, pretty much, but if it's an eclipse, it's, it's very heightened as far as the energy waves and the frequency cleansing. So we, we can have some epiphanies 
about our partnerships, our significant others. And let's just put it on a simple foundational level since Saturn is like, just get me to the black and white and the bottom line facts. It takes two to tango. And when one partner steps on the other's foot, I see, see, tensions arise. But the most important thing here is not that the dance between us has been disrupted, but rather what it's trying to tell us about the dynamics that have been at play. So our better, greater relationships, are they not, are based on the art of being present and operating from a we narrative without forgetting about the two me paradigms that make up that we. So it's me plus the equals we. So you're looking at that trinity there, me and how my embedded programming, how my psychological patterns, what I, you know, I had a, a, a television show in Florida that was called The Psychic and the Psychiatrist in the 90s, and he was a board-certified psychiatrist, a Scorpio, and they wanted to have, the, it, was, it was very pioneering for its time, a Scorpio, you know, a, a mystic on. So he came at it from the psychological pr- psychological perspective, like Carl Jung blended psychology and astrology and the archetypes of each of our personalities and signs. And then so he told me off camera one day and he says, you're, you're, you know, you're at a point in your life where you're beginning to see um, different aspects. You know, when we come to that first Saturn return of, you know, when we get into that 27 to 29 years old, you know, this is before that, but you're getting into that pattern of seeing why certain problems seem to keep recreating in the relationship, whether it's coming from you and triggered or coming from them and triggered, but it seems to be the same dynamic, like when people cheat on one another, for example, why they do that, why that happens to you, why people lie about money or or sexual connections. And he said, you know, relationships are like a dawning or a birth. And he said, regardless of whether you become intimate with someone you're attracted to on the very first night that you get together or three months later or not until six months, the night that you actually merge and become intimate in a, in a physical way, that's the birth of that relationship. That's what sets off the patterns. And when you get to a relationship, it's you. And it, he said there's really six people coming together. Now, this is psychologically. But, so that might blend with your metaphysical spiritual beliefs. It might not. I found it fascinating. And it's helped me all along. He said, so when you get with a guy, Mary, he said, so it's you, Mary, and how Mary's been affected by her mom and her mom's psychology and how Mary's been affected by her dad and his beliefs and his relationship actions or reactions. So there's six. And then then your partner, he's coming to the table with how he's been influenced or dynamically affected by his psychological relationship, plus or minus by his mom and his dad. So six people come together. And he said, there comes a point where you have to see you coming together with that potential partner besides and away from both of your, this lifetime, parental dynamics. It's fascinating when you can kind of just like, ooh, let me lean into that a little bit. So at a lunar eclipse, especially in Libra, there's a super potent full moon energy of a light, you know, swapping across all all the the energies around us. I mean, you actually see the light on the ocean waters, the light bursting through the clouds or through the trees. So it's it's a way that you can do like a vacuuming or a sweeping of some of these relationship dynamics that have reached a culmination point. It's reached as far as it's going to go. Don't yes. always make that a bad thing. Don't no. always make that a bad thing. No, 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 Trust no. Great, yeah, trust great mystery on the fact that it wasn't that he was all wrong or you were all wrong, if, you know, I mean, if a woman turns violent or stalking or if the the guy is acting out inappropriately around your kids or your animals or, you know, being toxic to you in any way, Libra energies help that proverbial balance and fairness come up. And at the super moon, I want to say one other thing, because we're talking about looking back as a reference point, you know, I mean, if, you know, if I'm going to go play basketball, there's two baskets, there's two teams. And there's measurements of, you know, what you do and then, you know, when the whistle will blow and you've got a foul or you've got to take a time out. So the supermoon of March 11th, the Pisces energy opened the portal of the big solar eclipse across America on April the 8th. It opened. Why? Because it's the new moon, the last new moon of the total lunar cycle. The signs go from Aries is number one to Pisces is the final sign. So we closed out the lunar year of the last 12 months on March 11th. When we, get to, when we get to the next new moon, 
that's the first new moon in the sign of Aries. So we're beginning a whole new lunar cycle. Think about lunar moods, our moods. So we started, we're starting a whole new year to the mystic or to the astrologer over March 19th and 20th, because why? Winter in the Northern Hemisphere by sign, the last sign of winter is Pisces. So the last sign of deep soul hibernation, examination of motive, letting go of toxic, addictive, drama-inducing behaviors and patterns, right? So we stopped that when we got to that new moon in Pisces. Then we have the, the solar new year, the beginning of the great turning of the wheel. We're back to, to me, the real beginning of 2024. My new year is when the sun gets to Aries. And that'll be in my time zone. It's going to be on the 19th. Other time zones, it'll be on the 20th. So when the sun first goes into Aries, then it's going to be there with Mercury in Aries, and it's going to have the North Node Aries conjunction around five degrees. So we've got, now we have a blend of Pisces into Aries. So we're letting go of the oceanic two fish that are swimming, saying, well, what is the dawning? Which way do you want to go? When you look at the symbol of of Pisces, the two Mm -hmm. fishes determining who's going to follow who. Then Aries comes along with Easter and Passover and the spring lambs and, and all the new life unfurling with Mother Nature. I mean, all you got to do is people, the people out there that say, I don't believe anything, listen, I can see it, smell it, or touch it. Well, you know what? You look out the window in the third week of March and April, and even though there might be a late frost or a snow or even a blizzard, still nature is unfurling her seeds of beginning. So the, the leaves and the blossoms are coming. The daffodils are up here in the Smoky Mountains, and I'm watching the birds vied to be able to get in and start building their nest. They're singing, they're mating. And so we have the springing forth vibration of the east on the medicine wheel. So what I would say to you to simple it all down is make a very cognitive, aware, determined decision about whether I have it or not yet in my life, whether I see the manifest of it or not in my life on a physical 3D level. I'm going to be a disciple, I'm going to be dedicated, I'm going to be uh, disciplined, and I'm going to start planting seeds from the inside of my soul outward with my verbiage, with my words. I'm going, when I dance to music, when I put on playlists from Spotify, I just found out today, Nicole, that Spotify has, you can type in on the Spotify app, you can type in Libra playlist, Pisces oh, yeah. playlist. They even- yeah, they even have one that said Supermoon Playlist. Now, I haven't played them all, so I don't know. But if we picked one song out of that, it would help people say, okay, this is how Libra, this is the song out of whatever it is, 15 or 20 songs. This is the song that made me dance to the Libra vibrations. And if you shake and dance, whether you're just in your house or you're outside in the backyard or whatever, whether it's with another partner or not, you're taking in to your physical temple you're taking in those sound frequencies and Libra can be music. Pisces is, is, is color healing and sound healing and breath work and aquatic type of massage. And Libra is about, let me breathe you. Let me look at the air around me. Am I arrogant? Listen, what am I breathing? What am I taking in? Because when we inhale in an alchemical way, when we set our intentions and we're breathing in, We're taking the inhale. You think people tell you to count down and breathe deep just to relax yourself and move into a meditative mindset? Uh Uh-uh. What you're breathing in by your thoughts and your verbiage is what you're declaring will become seeds of change in life for you. Well, this idea of this new dawning that you've been talking about, I think is so perfect. And it it, it feels very uh, important to reiterate because I just wanted everyone in the audience to know, because while you were speaking, um, Mary, I wanted to just double check because I feel like it's very important um, that when people think about how what's coming to light for them in this full moon, what is culminating, what is possibly uh, ending so something else can begin is so important to look back to one what happened around October 13th, 14th, and in the next couple of weeks after that, you know, towards the end of October for that Libra new moon. But then also that ha- that new moon happened at 21 degrees of Libra. Now, mm-hmm. the Venus, who is the ruler of, Li- of Libra, came up to the south node at 22 degrees in late November. So mm-hmm. Venus activated that solar eclipse where that new moon degree was. 
And something, and because again, we're talking about the South Node, because we're the South Node is in Libra. This is all about karma, purging, letting go. Um, what doesn't serve you anymore? It's 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 about excreting what no longer can be, so that you are creating space for newer things. And sometimes this revolves around when we talk about the South Node. This can talk about people from your past. This can talk about past lives. It can talk about a whole bunch of different things. Um, but that moment, if any of you experienced anything very dramatic that last week of November going into December, okay, that was when Venus and the South Node met just before the degree um, or just after the degree of where the moon was in October. So now, so now we look at where is Venus? Venus is in Pisces. Well, Venus loves mm -hmm. Pisces. She's very, yes, she she's, does. She's very romantic. She's idealistic. She she she's wants soft. beauty. She's, she's soft. soft. She's very she's very feminine. But there's also a deeply spiritual and healing energy that is coming forth for this particular full moon for all of you. That is uh, really uh, activating and adding a nice flavor. That I want to say, and this is where we're talking again. There's there's so many things going on here, but Pluto. We just talked, we talked earlier, we talked about how Pluto is, is making a beautiful aspect to this, to this moon, creating this kind of death and rebirth kind of energy transformation. Now, Pluto has been in Capricorn until it moved into Aquarius, right? In January. And so mm -hmm. what is the ruler of Capricorn? Saturn. Now, yeah. Saturn yeah. and Venus have an interesting little conversation just before this lunar eclipse. And I feel like yep. Saturn and Venus have communicated and say it's time for different standards. It's time for new boundaries or removing a certain boundary that is cumbersome to your growth. It's about making commitments. It's about really getting down to what matters most right now. And I think that's going to be a major theme coming up for a lot of people when they're looking at their relationships, what means the most to them. I think people, I think Venus wants to deeply connect on an emotional level and a spiritual level on a healing level um, as she's in Pisces. And I think that's being infused into people's minds right now and their being about, okay, am I getting a deeper connection with this friend or this, uh, this sibling or this partner or whoever it might be? And, and if I am, I'm ready to like, maybe take it to the next level. I'm ready maybe to go like, even deeper but or maybe you're not getting that connection maybe you're like you know what this isn't fitting this doesn't work for me anymore i'm not getting that deeper connection i'm not getting the commitment that i know i deserve or i'm not our values are not aligned anymore i think a lot of that's really coming up for conversation around this full moon perfectly said and you know i i look at the fact that this this lunar eclipse on a moon day, on Monday in Libra, is, is pushing us to give up. Let's talk about the Aries, the opposite sign of Libra. It's pushing you and I to give up our competitive, individualistic, ego-driven outlooks and seek out the power of the collective, the, the mutual win-win. So we are put on point with our soul lessons to become a more active player and a greater community to bring up feelings of peace, the soft, the, the soft moments, the sweet spot, and acceptance for the long-term win. So the rest of the week after this eclipse is pretty laid back because we've been seated. You know, the new lessons have been seated. And so I, I feel like with Aries involved, the sun in Aries, Mercury in Aries, like Nicole said, North Node in Aries, soon Venus will join that up at the North Node point. And so there's going to, no matter how much we try to schedule events in our life and we try to control it and plan it, there's going to be spontaneous moments that love can just pop into your life. Now, probably what we're going to be attracted to in, in that intimate partner is someone who's slightly rebellious, Aries, a little bit of that Aquarian flavor of Pluto, but also responsible and dependable because we're pulling in the Jupiter and the Uranus, Taurus, because Venus rules Taurus. And Jupiter favors and is exalted in Pisces. So we got this Taurus Pisces dance that's going on. And so what we by the weekend after the eclipse, 
we might want to just kind of put off the chores and, and schedule a cheerful brunch with a, a, a fun person. You know, comedy clubs are very favored under this, this run of energy March into early April. You know, look, look go, go support your local uh, jesters, you know, your local comedians. Music, dance, concerts, art, and comedic relief, you know, to support the, the, your favorite comedians, just like you invest in your astrologers and your life coaches and your soul clearing people and your oracle and tarot readings. I mean, when's the last time you went to a comedy club? When's the last time you kind of searched around in your area and just grab a bunch of friends and you can still have wine at the comedy club or, or your or tequila, whatever you want to do. So it's, it's like, don't push yourself so much to catch up on chores, schedule that. Venus is social. Libra is social. Schedule that win-win scenario, the brunch or whatever. So all these minus aspects of the, of the Pisces dynamic of suspicions of deception or, you know, all this social media continual divisionary things of psyops and nefarious this and so and so's being exposed and over here on Bohemian Island and you know, Epstein and all that. Just, you know, I, I really feel we need the tactile eye to eye, face to face, less text, less messenger, less TikTok, less, you know, emails. We need to actually be more centered in our personal manifested vortices right now, like where you live in your community, at your local restaurant, at your local theater or or a comedy club. So it's, it's like, I believe we need to seed our presence, you know, see what is manifesting right around us instead of like, oh, I'll only be happy if I take a vacation this year. You know, I think we right now are boots on the ground looking at Aries is the dawning. What's dawning for you? Maybe it's right in your own, near your own backyard and you can go out there and there can be something, a new restaurant opened or an old restaurant got a new owner or, or whatever, and you're able just to meet uh, out there, you know, overlooking the mountains or across the beautiful pasture. There's a place here in Tennessee that's a vineyard, you know, and they have these, you know, vineyards have these acres and acres and acres. This one grows muscadine grapes. They make wine and jellies out of, and it's so beautiful. that this little shop and this bench, and you sit out there, and motorcycle riders come to it, and you just sit out there overlooking this vineyard. The grapes aren't even growing yet. I just went there last week, and you just sit there, and it's like the majesty, Taurus, of Mother Nature in her, I'm getting ready to start the new grape crop for this year. And there's people watching the sunset or they come out there and they bring a picnic lunch. But it's like it didn't cost anything except to drive there. Now, of course, to support the place, I'll buy a jar of muscadine jelly or buy a little bottle of wine because they're paying the rent and the taxes on the property, right? And I got to sit there for free. So I don't mind tithing. You see the Libra win-win? I didn't have to buy a bottle of wine. I didn't have to get a jar of jelly. Maybe I'll give it away as a gift and it becomes a win-win again, right? But we're just, we're keeping that prosperity, Jupiter, Taurus. I mean, it's going to actually be food, Taurus. You keep hearing these new terms, which I don't like, of food insecurity. You know, I love that the farmers are revolting all over in Europe. That's the Pluto and Aquarius stuff and that Aquarius energy that opened up 2024 with it. But what's happening is we're restoring we're resetting, we're recalibrating, and we're starting to restore relationships balance. That's what we're wanting to do. And when Mars popped into Pisces right after Venus and Saturn got together on March 21st, then Mars changed into Pisces. So it's soft and it's sweet and it's mystical. Oh my God, it's mystical. If you've been starting to see the amping up of out of body etheric travel, not just astral travel, out of body experiences to where you met with certain people that were triggers of your past and it, it was a peaceful result, intense dreams. You don't even have to go to the meditation group or sit down. I mean, Mars, the initiator, the ruler of Aries is saying, let's go in and do some subconscious and some multidimensional light frequency cleansing and clearing while you're busy resting your body. So I can promise you in our dreams, dancing to music, listening to music and just falling asleep in your chair or your couch with certain music on that just seems to be uplifting music, whatever that is. It doesn't have to be just mystical music. It might just be, you know, soft rock or you're just going to do a hard rock dance workout. But whatever it is, this music is kind of getting the physical brain in mind at a certain level of letting go. That's the thing with Pisces and Libra. Let go. Let great spirit. Invite 
the almighty I am forces. Allow great mystery. Allow the Holy Ghost. Allow your angels to have access instead of you or I or Nicole feeling like we got to be the captain of control on the whole thing. Well, what about this? And what about that? And I got to make that phone call. And oh my God, I got to check on that. And I got to make sure I'm being responsive to my clients. All that's great in business. This is the business of alchemical cleansing and graduations on a soul prosperity level. So it's part of money in the bank. It's a part of a new job. It's a part of bringing in 3D currency. But don't you ever forget, especially with Pisces, your main currency is the currencies of your energy, your vital life force energies. And if something gets off or it's a perpetual tension, there will be a zone in your physical body that starts to do that. I have a lot of Virgo clients that it's their digestive tract. I have a lot of Pisces clients that stub their toe or bust a toenail or, or you know, trip or fall. The Pisces rules the feet. And so Virgo is that digestion. Pluto in Aquarius, that has to do with ankles. It has to do with circulation. So we're looking at Libra now. And Libra has to do with what pisses us off. It's the bladder. It's the ovaries. It's the kidney function. So when we say that pisses me off, I mean, it has a lot to do with are we doing our part to eliminate what might be toxic, but it shows up in our lives as a dessert, as sugar. You know, people that have diabetes, the reason they can end up having some heart concerns is because their sugar is off and the body's working harder to try to metabolize the lack of insulin or too much sugar or whatever. What do they give someone that gives into, goes into a diabetic coma? They'll give them orange juice. So that's what the paramedics will do. So right now we're balancing, is it sincere sugar? Is it too much sugar? Are we trying to sugarcoat things? Are we trying to avoid a little bit of a bitter spice, a little bit of a bitter pill, a little bit of cayenne pepper, that would be Aries, a little bit of adding the cayenne pepper. And ironically, in my holistic herbal world that I trained in for decades, cayenne pepper will stimulate the circulation of the body. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think, you know, when you talk about like that Piscean energy too, I think it's so like one of the biggest words that comes up is surrender you know? Yep. And so, so there's, there's a need to re like you said, letting go, right? There's a part yep. that we need yep. to be able to surrender to, whether it's surrendering to um, someone um, in our relationship field, or if it's surrendering to the fact that this relationship cannot continue, or, you know, s surrendering to things need to change, uh, whatever yep. it might be. And I, I also want to say, I do feel um, before we get into the sign by signs, um, I do feel Mary, like whatever's coming up here for everyone too, when it comes to your relationships, you're looking at it through the lens of your wounds and your healing, because we've got Chiron so close to the North node and still, and yep. that I feel like there's this, is this relationship allowing for me to not just heal, but also evolve, which means it will trigger you a little more, but it's going to trigger you in a different way that allows you to go deeper into seeing the things that you need to see that you wouldn't see if you didn't have other people around you. And so I feel like there's an evolution happening, like you said, like a reset uh, is happening here for relationships in understanding that it's time to go to a new level. It's time to take things to the next level. And the next level may be advanced healing. The next level may be embracing the healing. The next level may be, you know what? This person actually helps me go deeper into my healing. So I, yep. I, I think there's there's some kind of coloring of that around this particular energy as well. So now it's time to grab your pen and paper real quick or hit the replay on this because these are important dates. Nicole mentioned the conjunction of Chiron, uh, we've been talking about the North Node and the South Node, the Aries Libra dynamics. It's the Aries Libra dynamic right now is much more than the eclipses and the position of our karmic cleansing. So the North Node, often referred to by Vedic astrologers as the dragon's head. Oh, look at that. 2024 is the year of the wood dragon. So the dragon's head does what? It blows fire. So the North Node is in Aries. And so the fire fire of desires, fire of transmutation, the phoenix rising from the fire, the phoenix associated with Pluto, ruling Scorpio, now in Aquarius saying, look at it in unorthodox ways. Be somewhat of a revolutionary 
be a rebel with a cause, even if the cause is to get you out of psychological rut and, and subconscious stagnations that you've been in for way too long. Now it's going to come up, as she talked about, Mercury and Aries is going to conjunct Chiron. So the first conjunction that happened on March 20th, oh, look at that, right at the beginning of the spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. So Mercury joined Chiron. Chiron is one of the centaurs in Greek mythology. The centaurs were half man, half horse. And Sagittarius is one of the favored signs with these lunar and Aries eclipses. Sagittarians and Geminis are favored with these eclipses, very favored with these eclipses. So are, so are Leo and Aquarius. It's like a relief pattern for them. But this is the first. So March 20th is another reference point. Mercury aligned and joined with Chiron. And we were shown around this 19th, 20th, 21st of March, right when uh, Venus and Saturn came together in Pisces. And, and Mars went into Pisces on the 22nd. But this is the first green light of empowerment and leveling up. This is the first green light in a series of three. The other conjunctions between Mercury and other Chiron will be April 15th of 2024 at 20 degrees Aries. That's when Mercury will be retrograde. Mercury retrogrades April 1st. And then the third one will be on May 7th, around May 7th. I'm just going off my time zone of Eastern now daylight savings time. The third one will be on May 7th at 21 degrees of Aries. So let me say those one more time so you can check your notes. On March 20th, Mercury joined Chiron at 18 degrees of Aries, the first of three. The other two alignments where we are going to have scenarios, conversations, and spontaneous events of leveling up, as Nicole was talking about, taking things to a whole nother level, is going to happen over April 15th and then also on May 7th. So that's Aries' beginnings, initiations. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it to you. Get Really get it in your muscle memory. A new dawning, an initiation to where you don't doubt yourself anymore. Or even though it was a painful breakup or walk away or someone got let go of their job or whatever that was, that it seems like something or you are bidding something or someone farewell, the door is closing because the, le- the lesson has been completed. So don't get into that shame or blame of yourself or stuck on shaming and blaming them because it went south or it went sideways for you. This lunar eclipse is on the south node. And when you look at the nodes, the north node, the dragon's head in Aries is saying, I am the new work that we must all participate with. When there's a big event happening on the south node, like things in Libra right now, that's where we tend to take the easy way out or we slide back into what's familiar. The south node is where we got programmed and it's just our go-to reactions. It's our go-to response. When I get angry, I do this. When I get angry, I'm either self-destructive or I'm destructive to other situations and people versus the guy that punches a hole in the wall and throws a temper tantrum like a Tasmanian devil versus someone that goes silent and says, you know what, I'm going to guillotine your ass and I'm done. People have different strategies and styles of shutting down and backing out. So the Libra right now is saying, and with the Aries, so the dragon's head, the north node, that's the Aries. Think about the dragon can blow fire, like a whole laser beam of fire. But a lot of dragons, when you you have read this series of Aragon, the dragon series, or you've watched those movies, a lot of the dragons also have like spikes on their tail and they can fly. So the dragon's tail can like knock you off your butt, you know, as then it puts fire right there on the pathway. So it, the fire burns everything in its path to a crisp, right? So these eclipses, you know, we all need to be uh, responsible earth citizens when it comes to our campfires and how we're working with fire, be it propane gas fires or, or volatile type of situations, because Aries is when we get impatient with something in traffic or in transit, or we're trying to, to work with sharp objects or volatile liquids. We need to pay attention when we're working with chemicals that can explode or situations where the phone rings and we go off and we're addicted to our cell phone and we didn't pay attention to what we were doing outside with lighting up that fire pile or whatever it is. So fire right now can be a very globally destructive thing. I believe all of us with all of this Aquarius energy and Pluto and Aquarius are going to get some real exposés on these directed energy weapons, voice to skull, Aries rules the head, the voice to skull 
uh, Project Mockingbird type of scenarios that have been floating around out there in the conspiracy theorist avenues. I believe we're still going to be pulling our heads back, areas again, going, oh, well, la ti da, look at that expose. So it's going to be a lot of, um, uh, uh, through the centuries, uh, kings and queens, rulers and monarchs were very aware of eclipses, just like on April 8th. We're looking at the eclipse pathway, how it starts in Mexico and starts to sweep across Texas and then uh, Arkansas and going on up that way. When you look at the eclipse path, if you want a reference point, go back to late August of 2017 when we had the great North American eclipse at the 29th degree of Leo. And so that, when it came right over Sweetwater, Tennessee, I mean, it was incredible visual palatable energy to watch those moon circles happen all over the street and the yard. I mean, it was like ocean waters of moon circles during that eclipse. You could feel, I was with a, a group of neighbors, we didn't have to go anywhere because it came right over us, like it'll do in Texas and in Arkansas and Mexico and all of that. So you've got these eclipse points. These are literal energetic dynamic points, targets of where the, the vortices around the world are being highlighted and the news, of course, will be much more pronounced. I mean, look at over the last month and a half, all the stuff that's been going on in Eagle Pass, Texas, and the dynamics in, in the regular news, which I used to stay away from. I'm not in denial. I just take my social media news and Twitter and all that stuff with a very small dose. Like you talk about micro dosing. Yeah, I do that with, with the psyops of the, of the news. So what's happening right now is we are to reform our belief patterns, our go-to belief patterns. Aries gives us the courage to go, you know what? You know what? I've been that spiritual belief for a long time. I'm going to take the best of my Catholicism. I'm going to take the best of Buddhism. I'm going to take the best of Hinduism. I'm going to take the best of what I arrive at in meditation or Native American or whatever it is. And I'm going to do a blend of how that ultimately has me show up in the world as a better antenna, as a better agent for the divine providence. So the signs that are going to get the easier or the sweet spot faster, quicker, are going to be people that have a lot of Gemini, a lot of Aquarius, a lot of Leo, and a lot of Sagittarius. So those signs, if you have any planets, points, or house cuffs in your star, your Earth birth map, close to that five degrees, in any of those signs, Gemini, Sagittarius, Aquarius, and Leo, you're receiving an, a, an extra dose of harmonic influence. So let's say that you are a son in Sagittarius and your son is in the 10th house. So you'll be able to reap what you have sown in your professional life, 10th house, goals, career, priority of uh, uh, values and worthiness and all that over the next 28 days. So find where, as Nicole was saying, as we're emphasizing, where do you have any planets first that are in Aries Libra, then are favored around that three, four, five, six, seven degrees of Gemini, Aquarius, Leo, or Aquarius, the degrees come in as your second main phase. What degrees are between that, you know, four to six, three to seven? Where are the degrees of the favored and the challenged signs? Like the challenged ones are Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn. So out of all 12 signs, those eight are a little bit of the plus minus. When I say minus, I don't mean mad, bad or that you'll have to get mad or bad, or it's bad. I just believe that it puts you more into, a, as Nicole was describing, an automatic pilot growth phase. It's like that whole you can run, but you cannot hide. Toxic is as toxic does. And mm. if you've known in your soul and in your heart that that job really wasn't a, a good match for you anymore, even though you're afraid to step out in faith about the money, even though you hate going there every day, okay, or that relationship has turned toxic, they're cheating on you, they're lying to you. They're hiding the money. They're not being fair to you, even as a friend. Instead of blaming yourself and seeking their approval again and again, that's how they're manipulating you because they have now narcissistically trained you to keep trying to get their approval like it's always something wrong with you. That's a minus side of Aries and the minus side of Libra of keeping the peace at any cost. So the degree in the first five degrees of Libra is bound by Saturn. Saturn's in Pisces. So the major planets that are hosting and orbiting with this eclipse are Venus and Saturn. There's a lot of power to Saturn in this particular eclipse. And that means we're talking about what it means to draw your attention to the details of course correction, as Nicole mentioned in the first 10 minutes of this show. Number two, 
and then we'll go into the signs, is that Venus and Saturn themselves are separating in the water, emotions, oceans of emotion sign of Pisces. So this eclipse is being toned in a major way. There's that music again. There's sound healing, the tones, the breath work. It's being toned in an alchemical way by both Venus and Saturn. And we see that the eclipses are happening just after Venus and Saturn had a meetup, had a cosmic conversation in the alchemical sign of healing, whatever it is, in the sign of Pisces. So Pisces is mercy. Stop crucifying yourself, like in the, tradition, the Christian tradition, stop being crucified, stop crucifying yourself, move into forgiveness of self. You know, the whole aspect of Christian, Christianity, as that story goes, as Christ was on the cross, was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we've got to forgive ourselves and stop saying, my God, I spent five years in that relationship. I gave that job 26 years and they aced me at the last minute. I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that was fair. Libra's about fairness. I'm saying that do you trust Holy Ghost, Great Spirit, Grace Mystery, that you're done there. You're just done there. Because we're not taking that job or that partner with us when we exit back into spirit from whence we came. Sometimes we need to step back. And look at the perspective that we're not just the body, although our stress or our joy certainly does affect our biological temple now, doesn't it? Mm. It does. It absolutely does. So there's layers. You know, there's layers. And so Pisces is helping us um, showers of blessings. You know, mercy drops all around us. Pisces is helping us shower away. You know, uh, it's like the rebirthing um, phase that took off in the early 90s. Everybody was wanting to go get a rebirthing type of reading. So not so much past life, but it became really popular. Sandra Ray wrote books on rebirthing and how they had actual water tanks, salt water tanks. And it was all over Florida at the time. And people would go for an hour session and they would have hypnosis mixed with this rebirthing tank where they were literally floating in the salt water. Like a lot of women will have births in waters, like the dolphin births in waters when they're actually going to give birth because we come from a we come from a liquid environment. We come from inside a biological unit's womb waters. So Pisces is the womb waters of where the water breaks, the, the biological parent, the water breaks. Oops, I'm going into labor. Virgo is the labor time of the year of the harvest. And then there's the birth when the baby is born and takes on oxygen. That's the new dawning. But for all of us, they had an, an earth birth, whether it was C-section or underwater or in the hospital, we left being totally umbilical cord leashed to that biological unit, that mother nature supported unit of what they call the mother figure. And that figure, that biological figure had their nutrients and their vitamins and the calcium, and the magnesium and all that running along that embryonic leash called the umbilical cord. They cut that. They cut that. Our life force cord was cut. And then we took on oxygen and we had to become breatharians in a sense in an oxygen-based world. And so it's the air that we breathe. It's the air that we wear. Libra is an air sign. And it's about you and I balancing the words we use automatically to describe both our highest hopes, our most fervent frustrations. And, and earlier in the show, we talked about the V word. What's, what's vehement? What's vital? What's, what's vivacious? What's, what's voracious? You know, where is it that we can achieve victory in our spirit, into mind, into body? Because how you are in your spirit, how engaged and flowing you are with the so-called invisible forces that are dynamically involved in our life walk, how we put it in our mind, it's all how you put it in your mind. Whether you become a prisoner to your thoughts, a victim, there's another V word, to your beliefs, or where you become victorious in a sense of, I just need to make some new choices about how I say it, how I play it, how I think it, how I believe it, and how I act on it out into the world, and watch your body heal from any ill at easement or diseasement, because it's not just the pills or the medications they give you, it's how you're beginning to take the healing in from inside out, from your spirit. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the sickness out of your spirit. You've got to get the sickness at, at, away out of the soul level because the external people we come in contact with, they're just players in our life theater. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, we got to get into the uh, into the signs because we're an right. hour and fifteen already in. So yes, um... okay, okay. <laughs> so so let's first say let's first say happy uh, twenty twenty four birthday to our our Pisces sh- shifting into Aries now, and happy birthday to our new solar cycle and our new lunar cycle. Yes. Now that we've had the Pisces moon, new moon on March eleventh, and now we're embracing spring. And to those of you in the southern hemisphere listening, now it's your time of harvesting. And autumn. So either way, the trees are active. The plants are preparing. So autumn and spring, simultaneously on our Earth Mother, are times of visual, visual changes. We've got the fire colors in autumn, and we've got the blooming colors over in the spring and forth. So when we look at the signs of Aries Libra, we're looking at what do I want to have seeds of change and the beginnings and the initiations when we look at Libra. We're looking at, and what did I harvest this year? How may I pat myself on the back that I go, went ahead and did the weed and feed in my garden and I'm prepping it for next year? What were the fruits of my labor? So with Aries, this is the biggest initiation cycle that you have had, no matter what your biological age, in 19 and a half to 20 years. Again, I take you back to what was the priority focus in 2003 into 2004, just kind of swirl around that time frame, 2000, like maybe the fall of 2002 into the beginning of 2005. What key situations, people, places, or things entered your life, exited your life? And it, besides just the people, look at what the theme was. And easily, there could have been a hard lesson and having to say goodbye to a pet or a person that actually made their physical life transition during that time. When that happens, our whole life is altered, especially when it seems like someone has died in their earth life prior to just old age, like the animal died too young or got hit by a car or it ran away or the person is much younger than us and they passed away. It's just like that's that's kind of like a freeze frame shock wave that happens and how those those parameters start to shift because we're so used to picking up the phone, having lunch with them, and they're just gone, feeding them, and there's the dog bowl or the cat bowl we're looking at. So having said that, around Aries and Libra this year, there could be a new pet entering your life. There could be very intense dreams over the next 28 to 30 days of loved ones, be it animal or person, that have gone in uh, to the, the spirit pastures. And you receive like some confirmations and some resolutions and some real aha, oh my, that totally took the pain out of me. Pisces can also be taking the pain out of us. It can also be how we embrace spirit. So for Aries, you know, this is how spirit can embrace you and help unchain you and get rid of what we call in in the mystical world, some psychic knots or emotional cords. And like we're cutting emotional umbilical cords. We're undoing and unraveling uh, psychic level types of knots that when we say, I don't know why this keeps happen- happening to me and why me, Lord, and that kind of stuff, we can get some very gentle, as Nicole said, soft, sweet, pot, sweet spot type of ways, mercy, graciousness, you know, ways to where we go, wow, glory, hallelujah. I, I just got totally freed of something that bugged me for the last eight to 10 years, and it's what the Bible calls a quickening. You know, simply with the snap of the fingers, you're totally unchained and free, and you're like, whoa. To me, those are aha, uh, empowering epiphanies that happen, and I'm ever so grateful for those things when they show up. They may be triggered by a person or an event, be it a loss or a gain, but you ultimately go through that empowerment shower. So for Aries, this is about what you'll settle for and what you won't tolerate anymore just because you're attracted to a biological person. It's how the dynamic of how they show up for you or don't, how they appreciate you and really see you and get you or don't. Are they fighting to change you all the time? You know, I'd like you a lot better if you didn't do that. And I'd like you a lot. It'd be a lot easier for us to get along if you just do this my way. Aries on a minus level can be my way or the highway. So Aries, let's look at the dynamic of you not needing to over-dominate or control someone and you not for the sake of peace at any cost, which ultimately will cost you your peace, them only seeming to be affectionate with you or respond to you when you do things their way. So there's got to be a meeting of the minds and more importantly, a seeing with the heart-to-heart 
face to face, heart to heart, eye to eye type of a thing. Because for Aries, I always play, I like word play. When I look at the word attention, where your attention goes is where the energy will, will flow, whether it's a plus or a minus. But if you look at that word phonetically, attention, take the letter A, put a dash, a dash tension, T-E-N-S-I-O-N. What are you giving an A-list priority to, but it's causing you more tension? So why do you keep paying attention to things that are producing tension? in your fields of experience. So for Aries right now, I feel like they've got some uh, spring cleaning to do as far as their toxic responses or behaviors. Take it to yourself first, people, regardless of your sign. Take the mirror to yourself and say, and why do I do that? What is that? You know, and start making it more comedic and humorous and let it go. If you're a Taurus, this particular full moon dynamic eclipse in your ruling planet, Venus governs both Taurus and Libras in the sixth house. So you, you Taurus are literally focusing your attention onto how your biological, your earth body is feeling. How do you react to the certain dietary choices, nutritional supplements that you put in? I've got a Taurus client that she said, you know, I've been putting off taking care of these skin tags and having these moles checked and you know, she's been doing like these holistic red laser treatments and all. At, at, at the, a lot of these estheticians now are doing that red kind of laser stuff on your face. So like we're moving into the, the, you know, the new tech of Aquarius. So the laser therapies and moving on from just what used to be with just oils and creams. So for Taurus, it's a really good time for you to be thanking your vital organs. That's right. I said thanking and appreciation and giving thanks and moving in a field of gratitude for your wonderfully made heart and your beautiful bones and the meniscus and the sinew and the cellular level, like to really verbally say while you're in the shower or walking outside to get your mail, my little cells are dancing, they're singing, they're sparkling. I give thanks for the effervescence and the wonder and the dynamic of wellness at my cellular level. You can say that one time and your subconscious goes, whoop, got it. But that's not the normal way we talk to ourselves. We tend to point out what's wrong or what hurts. Ow, that hurt. That was sharp. That was hot. Ooh, I, I looked at all that furniture. Man, my shoulders are sore. Well, Taurus rules the neck, the thyroid, the throat level of how we melodically speak our words and how we choose to let our words come to life as we express our feelings or we express our appreciation and gratitude to the people in our life that are worth it and that matter and have value. Taurus is always about that priority list of what matters much and what holds high value in a Taurus's life. So the Taurus lesson is about when's the last time we showed gratitude, a tithe of appreciation or donated to, you know, buying that person lunch or sending that person a little card or, you know, leveling up ourselves. But I just want you to know, I just love that you're in my life. Thank you. Thank you the contributions, the intelligence, and the wisdom that you've done. So for Taurus right now, it's about orbiting out the energies of liking themselves better, looking at how they've conditioned their hair, they're taking better care of their skin, they found their favorite exfoliant, they're looking at hydrating the body in better ways, and if they happen to have a wild weekend where they get really inebriated or whatever, they spend the next 10 days building that immunity back, you know, remembering to take the probiotic, remembering to do a power smoothie of some sort. It's very physical, very much to do with the biological body with Taurus right now, even though we're, you know, we've all got these run and busy type of schedules. You know, it's like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland that runs around looking at its stopwatch. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere, but there's no real like, ah, you know, it's just like it's, it's the constant hamster on the wheel. So for Taurus right now, I'd say you're coming into your, your, the energies of your 12th house, which is the natural home of Pisces for you. Taurus is like, you need to replenish, you need to restore, you need to recalibrate, and you need to refresh yourself. Take care of you. It's a sixth house transit because you're about to come into your biggest blooming cycle when we get to late April and May. If you're Gemini, it's fifth house. You are one of the favored signs. I would say the caveat for people that are heavy in Gemini planets, of course, Libra gets along with you. Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius gets along with you. 
but it's a fifth house lunar eclipse. And so it speaks about if you have entered into a relationship where someone has a stepchild, there was children present before you ever actually got in to the commitment of that relationship. There could be something to do with stepchildren that's a little bit of a tension bringer. There could be, you know, sometimes the stepkids will start to, even though they've accepted that the parents are living together, got married, whatever, there's still those those broken fences of who their original biological parent was, the mother they're no longer with in that same mommy, daddy type of scenario. And I, I know a couple of Gemini clients right now that, you know, they're, they're actually in their upper 60s and the stepkids like 19 and the parent that had hurt that child the most was the biological father. And now the stepkid is trying to cause tension between the, you know, they're kind of come between and triangulate the, the stepdad and the, biological mom and even though their biological dad was abusive to them they're trying to win approval over there still so there's this triangulation that could be happening which gemini can multitask gemini can have a lot of multifaceted scenarios spinning around them they know how to keep themselves busy but that only frustration that i see is that it has something to do with a child acting out or for you older gemini's to want to kind of protect and step in to make something a little sweeter, a little easier. If some parents are going through tension, it might be you, Gemini, that steps in and says, let me, let me take the grandkids for the weekend. Let me go bless the grandkids with the pizza or the ice cream shop or a little weekend at the beach or go spend the night with grandma or grandpa or your favorite aunt or uncle. If you're cancer, yeah, this is, this is a cardinal sign. Cancer and its opposite Capricorn. Uh, For cancer, it's a fourth house transit. So, oh, my God, if you want a physical way to bring in prosperity into your life, cancer, declutter. Go through the closets. Look at the garage. Start reorganizing the closet or reorganizing your garage, and you'll find the things that you could easily pass on to somebody else that would benefit from it, from a yard sale or take it to a thrift store or donate it to the animal thrift shop or these places that you donate things and it helps with used to women and children, but I, I feel like if you've got Cancerian energies in your chart, go through your clothes, go through the quilts and the blankets. Animal shelters always need sheets and blankets and things and, and just pay it forward. You know, just let it go because as you declutter and you you have less hoarding and clutter, and that's a big thing in feng shui, the Chinese feng shui. If you're a hoarder or you're cluttering too much, one day I might use it, you're weighing your energy down. So for cancer, it's around home base. It's domestic. I know a lot of Cancerians that are saying, I want to paint the house. I want to paint one wall a different color. I want to put different colors of flowers in this year. It's like they're wanting to do something to where their hands are in the dirt and they're actually putting different herbs. But people that have never planted herbs, I've got a lot of Cancerians that are planting lavender and rosemary and oregano. They want to have their culinary, cancer, the chefs. They want to have their healthier, holistic culinary herbs in it. And actually, they're baking lemon and lavender flowers together because it's edible, and they're learning a little bit more about that. And and for cancers, it could also be a psychological release cycle of the mother's effects upon you, stepmother, grandmother, biological mother. What was their main frustrations? What was it that brought them joy? What was it that you saw them cut loose on? You know, what was it that relieved them of tension or that they were absolutely hung up on? as you knew them and you kind of observed that. So for Cancerians right now, there's a deeper cleansing going on with the matriarch, the mother figure, and how you, Cancer, tend to define how you like to specifically soften and nurture someone that you care for, a loved one, a child, an animal, and how you would love to be nurtured yourself. And maybe it's just back rub. You know, maybe it's just like, yeah, we can have all the spicy sex we want to, but oh, Lord, when I don't have to respond and do love making and just have someone genuinely just rub my back and my legs and my neck and just really want to give me soft touches that bring the blood circulation up to the surface and I don't have to respond by like, thank you, now I'm going to make love to you. I mean, just someone that just wants to nurture you, brings you that cup of coffee, slices the pizza for you. That's what's really going to get cancer's attention right now because that's the gift of cancer. They know how to do that. If you're a Leo, you're favored. It's a third house type of thing. So writing uh, contractual agreements or or clearing up any contractual dynamics, 
It's got to do with your neighborhood. It's got to do with your community. Leos like to show up with some type of funny or grand entrance. I always say in The Wizard of Oz that Glinda the Good Witch was a Leo. She knew how to have the sparkly wand and the and the bubble all around her. And so it's that lion hearted, you know, dynamic type of thing, king of these, queen of the room. Your energy, when you walk into the room, your energy splays out all over the room because you're walking in with intentional light and love. That's the Leo part of our charts, where we show up radiant. So for Leo, it could be podcasting or uh, going to these uh, cocktail hours that are paint parties now. I mean, it could be to where you're, uh, you're inviting dance or, or a, an activity with uh, something that you're having pleasure with. It's the pleasure principle for Leo right now, but it's how you commit to it, how you believe in it, how you preach it, how you teach it, and how you are getting people actively involved in something that's fun and lighthearted. So I don't spend a lot of time on Leo right now because you're pretty much favored by the Aries stuff and the, and the Pluto and Aquarius is a long time game plan. So for Leos right now, there, I'd say if there's any challenges, it's got to do with partnership regeneration. It's, you're seeing partners and experiencing, part, experiencing your, your key partnerships in ways you didn't even know were possible. And you both are transforming because of the challenges, because of the difficulty, and because of how you both bounce back and say, damn, we may have had our ups and downs, but I'm really glad I had your strength as I went through this hard storm, this hard life storm. You're Virgo. Okay, so with Virgo, a Libra eclipse, Libra's right after the sign of Virgo. So Virgos are like getting all the little financial house in order. The Virgo clients I have are clearing, I mean, it, it's absolutely 15 to 20 year cycles of real estate issues and legal issues and lawyers that wouldn't represent them before in that time frame now are. And it's like everything seems to be flowing a lot smoother for Virgos cutting ties to the past, their, their childhood town, their old relationship that even though they broke up 10 years ago, one of them was ready to break up and one of them was, and I know a Virgo that was involved with the Scorpio guy and he you know broke up with her but she kept clinging on and clinging on oh it's just a phase we broke up before he'll come back yeah well he moved on and got married and had a kid so the virgo is still having trouble letting go with that so it's that letting go process of what once held a priority position in your life emotionally or financially so some good job things can be coming up from virgos i get a psychic sense that the money flow and Selling one thing, liquidating some things, free you up for being able to have the Aries new dawning of be, being able to invest in some things that matter more now, like in your current 2024 dynamic. It's an eight year. It's an eight year. And so when we add the eight of 2024 to March, which is a three, we're in 11 dynamic. All the month of March, it's an 11 numerological energy. And so what it's saying to us, and on the eclipse day, if you look at the 25th, it ends up adding out to a one. So we've got some new beginnings. We've got the 11, we've got the one, and we've got the three, if you're into numbers. And so this is about one is Aries, 11 can be Aquarius, and the three can actually be the energy dynamic of how the, the Libra and the Taurus take it and go forward with that, with that pleasure pasture. If you're a Libra, oh, honey. You in the spotlight big time. If you're a Libra, it's about it can't be I'll keep the peace at any cost. Because I, you know, I say to my Libra clients all the time when I look at the Libra areas of my chart or your chart, I say, um, what game is what how do you gain if it costs you your peace? I mean, how do you win if you're secretly unhappy and you're putting on a mask of a smile or you're you're keeping it looking like it's okay for the family or you're so afraid of having a second divorce that you keep smiling, but you're really unhappy at home that you're, are you more afraid of society's judgments on what your choices are essentially or personally? Like are, are you more, are you letting that rule over your actual relationship status? So if you're a Libra right now, you're going to be bolder. You're going to be more confident in being able to smash the predicted behaviors that other people say, well, she's this, or she likes this, or no, she likes that type. That's her attraction template. That's what he always goes. He always goes for the same type. Yeah, I see that all smashing for Libra. I think they're going to trip the light fantastic. I think they're going to dip their big toes in the water. I've never really adventured into that country or dating someone from another culture, or if they experience a bisexual thing they've never done before, they're going to keep it all to themselves. 
but they're trying to break they're trying to break overly heavy predictive judgmental behavioral prisons upon themselves and i'm not telling you what you need to do i'm just saying be prepared to be surprised at your own behavior and your own choices that you let your hair down because you're looking at wow i've always only done it that way maybe i can look at it from a different perspective and maybe when i travel to costa rica or maybe if i go to hawaii or maybe if i am jewish and i date somebody catholic or i'm brown skinned and i go for somebody yellow skinned or whatever and then crack the attraction just happens like you didn't pre-plan it you didn't try to control it but i believe libra is going to not only surprise a lot of people but libra is first of all going to be surprised with themselves of like i don't care if I'm 24 years older than them, I don't care. Uh, this feels right. And I'm looking at the energy now and not just the biology. And I'm not just looking at society's rules or my family's rules or my religion's rules. I really, this person really gets me and I really get them and I'm going to be committed to this right. So Libras are going to be a little rebellious. Scorpio, it's your 12th house. So the 12th house is the natural home of Pisces. And so there's this wonderful energetic releasing that's going on you are literally leaving the womb of the cause and effects of energies that were around you for the last 20 years you are literally being resurrected now that's that's no stranger thing to scorpio people because we scorpios have pluto as our governing planet and scorpio is the phoenix is the eagle that flies higher than any other bird in mother nature and scorpio can be the scorpion it has both pinchers and stingers. It is the snake that has to shed its skin. So when you have a lunar eclipse occurring in mid-March and in the sign of your 12th house, the biggest graduation of now count your blessings is a procedure that's being seeded all the way into mid-September of 2024. So Scorpios, they don't, they don't shrink from challenges. They know life is intense. Most of the activity of a Scorpio's world and choices happens on the inside first anyway. Scorpios are very aware of agendas and premeditations and they're natural detectives and, and soul surgeons. Uh, you know, they can be on the, on the negative side, uh, master manipulators and narcissistic bitches and bastards. Absolutely, they can be, you know, mastermind villains. But when you play it on the high, so if you're that, Scorpio, let me just add this, your karmic ticket just got punched. And if you've been hurting and abusing and stealing and, and being a, a vampirical type of energy, your comeuppance is here. Yeah. So if you're a Scorpio that's been hurting and abusing and manipulating and stalking and all that, yeah, check yourself because great spirit's about to. But those Scorpios that have risen from the ashes and said, no, 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 that bad job, that bad relationship, that unexpected death, that's not going to take my joy and that's not going to make me turn bitter to this life walk. I'm going to get better not bitter if you're sagittarius again favorite sign it's 11th house the only i spoke about this on my new moon show over on lighting the void i when i got to sagittarius with the new moon in pisces although sagittarius is very favored with the aries and libra uh, celestial recipe i got this psychic feeling that there's something at home base the pisces you know sagittarians often are the black sheep you know, the innovative um, agents of change within the family dynamic, but they're always the ones that try to be the hero and solve it and keep the peace because they've got Pisces on the fourth house. So I believe this Saturn, Jupiter, Taurus, uh, uh, Neptune, Pisces thing is finishing up the transit 2025. They're popping into Aries. So there's something in that home life that you Sagittarians need to be more aware of. Like, is there deceptive practices going on with the mate? or the kids, what's going on? Like it could be that you don't know it yet and one of the kids has developed some type of drug addiction or alcohol addiction or, you know, it, it, you know, there are families that we've all known that all of a sudden the teenager's been cutting on themselves or, or being abused in a relationship and you just didn't know because the child was afraid to tell you or reveal it. They just wanted to like not be experienced besides the abuse they're going through the disappointment of parent of like, what the hell would you put up with that for? You knew you could come to me. So it's that old dynamic of even though someone's getting abused, they get afraid to reveal the abuser's activities or identities to their to their caregivers or their families because they're scared the bad guy or the bad woman 
will also hurt their other loved ones. So they they become the animal or the or the child or the lover that is receiving the the angry strikes or the inappropriate behavior. So somewhere around Sagittarius, I do want to say to you, Sagittarius, turn on that intuitive antenna and be an, an investigative detective on how are they doing really? What's behind that smile? Do they look sad in their eyes yet they're up, the corners of their mouth are, are, are lifted up? Do a little bit of investigating on that in a very stealth mode. And other than that, I think that Sagittarians are going to be moving away from how the world wants to do fear mongering and scare tactics with wars and rumors of wars and food insecurity and financial you know, fears and all that. I think Sagittarians are going to be shooting their arrows of inspiration and going, you know what? I'm not getting caught up in that 2020 scenario anymore. If you're Capricorn, yep, big eclipse for you. Big eclipse, 10th house. So Capricorns may be looking at the patriarchal or the father figure in their life, whether they're still alive or they've passed into the glory pastures. There's something for you Capricorns that has to do with the stamp of the best part of the grandfather or the father or the older brother or the protective males in your life, whether you're biological, male or female, there's something to do with the, what mattered the most about your father, with your father's life, their legacy, what they made as a priority. And I believe that Capricorns are also like cancer liquidating. They're beginning to back out of certain businesses to sell them to somebody else, but let it be owned by somebody else. And I, I definitely see that with Cancer and Capricorn, par down, thin out, sell things so you can invest in some brighter new things with new partners that you have or a new relationship. You let go of the things from that past divorce or, or that past job or whatever. Get those memories and those, that artwork and those clothes that you wore to the divorce or you had the baby in. Like Let all that go and be new energy for somebody else and be able to embrace the present blessings of the year of our Lord 2024. Aquarius and Pisces to go. Aquarius, it's ninth house. Yes, you are favored. But oh, you Aquarians are not going to let anybody tell you what to do or when to do it. Because Aquarians, I've always said about Aquarius, you know, when Aquarius is go crazy, they just they're just damn crazy. Like you can't predict they're crazy. I mean, they go they they make crazy interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> Aquarius right now it's ninth house, and so I really think that you Aquarians might be surprised with how powerfully you have an archangel visitation or an out-of-body experience or you tried that little altering uh, chocolate bar or CBD or THC or micro mushroom or whatever it is, I feel like you are occurring to like, damn, that was interesting. So I feel like that the thrills that people seek when they want to ride the highest roller coaster or they go to these big events, you know, like they go to Bush Gardens or they go to the highest roller coaster in the country and all that kind of stuff because they want an adrenaline adrenaline rush or a thrill seeking Aquarius, trust me you can call nicole back or you can get a hold of us and let us know in chat one of these months before september damn mary wasn't kidding when she said it was about to be a roller coaster ride but now remember roller coaster rides have their own kind of little thrill seeking too so roller coaster rides you might go ah i mean you know you go up click 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 and there's like this fast surge and it jerks you around the corner and you get off of it going that was about three minutes of like wow so there's there's excitable anxiety fun adrenaline rushes and then there you know you got to watch getting addicted to that though so i would say for aquarius everything that you thought you believed about did we really go to the moon was that really true does that herb really work is that the best oil for me there's a lot of discovery i see i see aquarius right now as soul pioneers soul pioneers like they're about to have to put their boots on the ground and actually be committed to the ride and if you're Pisces, okay, Pisces, it's eighth house. So there was a song that was done years ago that my, I remember my relatives used to listen to. It was by a Pisces singer named Roberta Flack. And she did this song called Killing Me Softly. And so I want to say to you, Pisces, what's killing you softly? Where are you a bit addicted to escapism? Is it the prescription? Is it an addiction? Is it, is, is it that you're recoiling and you're retreating? And although this sounds bold to say, I've got to tell you, I know some Pisces people that really didn't get shaken enough to make that major transitional change in their lives until their spouse died, until they went to the edge of death, until they went to the, 
they survived the car crash and crawled out of it when they were in the hospital for a while, but the whole car was totaled and it caught on fire and yet they were saved. You know, Pisces rules first responders, the ambulances, the hospitals, the drug rehab, prisons. I know a lot of Pisces clients that nothing could get them away from a destructive, self-destructive modality in their life until they got busted, until they went to prison, until they went to rehab, until they almost died in childbirth or almost died in the in the car accident or being thrown off the horse or or almost got electrocuted or then their their key parent or partner died. There's something about that death thing or going to the edge of the cliff or the like in the tarot, the fool card. You know, they have to go to the edge of the precipice. They they can they can fall off the cliff and slip and lose their footing or they can fly. And I feel like it's a, a fight or flight kind of thing with Pisces right now, like they've got their mind a lot on, will this current illness kill me? Am I ever going to get better? Do I have cancer? What's the mammogram going to say? What's the MRI going to show? It's almost like they've got to be wary. I'm going to say it. It's bold and it sounds judgmental. I don't mean it to be that way. But if you get into the minus category of the Pisces energy, it can be that you go to the edge of death with an illness or an addiction because it's been getting you sympathy, you know, oh, she's sick, let's go take her lunch, she's sick, let's send her cards, let's give them attention, oh my God, that's so sad that happened to them in their life, let's go be there for them, <clears throat> and I call it like, some Pisces use a wheelchair as the throne, they get to go first in line, they're in a wheelchair, open the door for me, give to me, let me have a pity party, and sometimes consciously they don't know that they're doing it. But it's another way to escape the responsibilities of life if you can't run or walk. And then you see people that go to dance studios and learn how to dance, even though they had an illness that put them in a wheelchair. So it's that <coughs> ability to say, I'm not going to just be hanging on the cross anymore. If you take it back to Christian symbology, it's time for me to get off the cross. It's time for me to stop just looking at how many times I was whipped on the back as I was carrying my own cross to crucifixion. So I think the crucifixion, maybe even the whole, the whole Easter Passover story mm -hmm. this year, and, the, the, you know, the stone rolls back and Jesus says to the disciples, I'm not there. I have risen. So maybe I would uh, finish that by saying, Pisces, look at the risen Christos. Look at the resurrected um, agent of light. What would resurrect you? How could you rise above it instead of being a prisoner of it? Yeah. Yes. That's, I think yeah. Pisces and Sagittarius have some work to do on that. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, this is a new dawn. <laughs> so thank you. Awesome. That, awesome. Awesome. Yes. So, well, that was wonderful, Mary. Thank you so much for taking thank everyone you. through their own individual signs. And hopefully that's helpful to you guys to navigate this, uh, full moon lunar eclipse in Libra happening uh, on the, uh, the 24th, 25th. Is it, is it the 25th? Yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 So um, I also, if you guys are interested, you can catch because we still have a solar, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Solar eclipse coming up on the 8th of April and Mary will be doing her show with Joe Roop on lighting the void. So you can check her out on uh, Joe's podcast uh, in early April for that uh, that lunar eclipse, or sorry, that solar eclipse. And uh, it'll be good insights because that is our uh, first new moon of Aries of the astrological season. And that one's packing a punch and we're heading into, we're just heading into some really intense energies right now for the next couple of months. I think we're, we're powering up. So uh, check uh, lighting the void out with Joe Roop and Mary's show there. And of course, if you'd like to book a session with Mary, you can go over to her website, maryducina.com. I'm going to leave her links in the description below. And uh, Mary, do you have any messages you'd like to leave everyone with before we head out? I believe this is a hallmark, powerful, one of the most powerful dawnings, one of the most powerful sunrises of this life walk. I really feel whatever our biological age, whatever relationship status that we have, these intimate connections, these spontaneous empowerments, I, I believe that we are getting unchained with our normal ego leashes. And I believe that we're literally standing as fresh newborn lambs 
as we go into this rising sun, this, this, uh, it's a new dawning. Don't be afraid of the beginnings. Embrace them. And I would say one of the ways that you can do it quietly and for no money with yourself, no money spent, is to be able to simply say, great mystery, I give it to you. Almighty I am forces, be my guide, breathe me, great spirit, great mystery, holy ghost, archangels, uh, providences of love's light. I allow you to be my first intimacy. I allow the marriage of my soul to all that serves the highest good of my soul as I am here on earth as well as my footprints in the heavenly as above so below so this is indeed one of the biggest aries crescendos and dawnings in our life if it shows up as a significant partner if it shows up as you move you leave a certain job or whatever someone leaves you it's a dawning that's fated it's a date with destiny this is a dawning that's a date with destiny and i embrace it Mm, i love that i love that and um Speaking of new dawnings, uh, the Forbidden Journey Retreat is just weeks away. It'll be April 24th, which is, uh, what, do, what do we call it? A palindrome number? The pal- pal- <laughs> I can yeah. never get the name yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. so it's uh, 424. Two, four. Two, four uh, is when the date is. So if you're looking for uh, an incredible transformation in your life, if you're looking to break through some kind of wall that's holding you back, then um, the Forbidden Journey Retreat could be just the thing for you. And you would definitely be meeting a lot of new like-minded people, possibly forging friendships, which I know at the last retreat, a lot of people made some really beautiful friendships. Some have even become best friends. And I just love that that is what's birthed from these events. So if you're interested in coming, I'm going to leave a link below. You can sign up the form to apply to come to the retreat and um, maybe I'll see you there. Otherwise, guys, I love you. Have an incredible lunar eclipse and I will see you next week. Thanks again for joining me for another show on the Enlighten Up podcast. I love you guys so much for all of your continued support. So remember to raise your vibe, find your tribe and be open to the infinite possibilities held in the mysteries that surround us all. Thanks again for sharing the show with your family and friends. And if you're new to the show and you need to find out more information about me, please head on over to my website, NicoleFrolic.com, where you can join my newsletter. And please follow me on Instagram, Telegram, and YouTube. Keep your light bright and I'll see you next week.